Well, good evening, folks. It's an absolutely awesome time to talk to a Swedish band that will be coming to Australia in a couple of weeks for a one-off exclusive gig. I'm talking to the Mighty Hammer for. Originally, I was supposed to talk to the front man, the lead singer, Jokum, but he had to cut it. But I have to say, do not fear. I do have another member. I have the guitarist, the mastro, Pontus here. <laughs> How you going, Pontus? Uh, everything is good over here. Yeah. I, I, I have to say, may, maybe the weather is not that good, but comparing to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, but every, everything is great. Re, I have to say, really looking forward to come down under and play. So it's... Yeah. It's uh, been... Yeah, we, we, Hammerfall been trying for 18 years, but... I think it's time now. <laughs> it is. And just to say that I have got a report that came out early this morning from the event itself. Apparently, it's going to be filmed exclusively, this one-off yeah. performance. So we're looking for that. I'll be there. I'll be in the front row and putting my hammer fist up in the air, as always. I've been... <laughs> but um, just, just to go on a little bit, I spoke to Oscar last year in part of the revolution album that came out last year yeah. and one of our fans that listened to that interview unknown to me i just found out afterwards that they started a petition for getting you guys onto soundwave for 2016 fast forward yeah. fast forward about six to seven months we hear that you guys are coming to melbourne australia for the very first time in 18 years i just want to say yeah. would you guys we have been asked early to today leading up to this interview would you guys be coming back to australia to do an exclusive tour around australia we would love to do it the only thing is that we've been yeah, we've been we've been trying it's not easy you know just to come by australia to do a tour it's you know it's it's all, all, always economy involved when it comes to that but the thing is, we we would love to come and do a tour, sound wave, what you know, whatever. That's that would be amazing. And I have to say, coming down now to do this show and just you know f feel the atmosphere coming down and see, you know m meet the Australian fans. It's like wow. Mm. So I, I have to say, of course, if we get opportunity, we be straight back to Australia. Yeah, of course. I just want to ask, I know, the, I know the band pretty well. I've been following you guys over the course of the last 10 years. I know there was eight years before that, that's 18 years, but the last 10 years I've been following you. I just want to ask, how Frederick going, being a new father? Uh, he, he's, uh, he's doing really great when it comes to that. He's, he's been, it, it, it collided, you know, when... when, when um, he got his second child that collided with the European tour, tour. So he had to stay home for to be a dad. And um, but he he's loving it, and he's a he's a, he's a great father. So <laughs> yeah, and all praise to him. And, and I know you had a previous member join the band to play the bass. I just want to ask: when you come to Australia, who's in the band now? I know the drummer just recently left, um, not long after Revolution came out. And yep. for whatever reason, I just want, I want two questions here leading to one. Yep. How was it for the band knowing the drummer was going to leave? And secondly, how, who is in the band now coming down to Australia? Yeah, I, I, I have to say, when it, it sort of built up a little bit, I have to say, when Anders, you know, he, he wasn't happy in the situation. And Anders has been in the business for so long you know, way back in the eighties, and I think you know he he was he he was satisfied with all all the things he achieved in life, and you know he maybe came to he came to uh, a point where he he was a little bit you know he didn't care anymore, and 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 we could feel it for quite a long time that you know he's not happy, and so that when he decided to leave. Even if you're never ready when it happens, it was like, aha, okay. He he now now he he needed this time, you know, to adjust to the decision of just leaving the band. But I, I have to say, you know, everything out of bad things 
some good always comes out of it. And, uh, and uh, now coming down to Australia, we're going to bring uh, David Wallin and he's uh, the former drummer of Pain, Swedish yep. band Pain. Yep. And uh, I have to say, with fresh blood in the band, it's, you know, it's amazing. You know, the energy comes back and mm. sort of the, the feel of the youth when you wanted to rehearse 24 <laughs> seven <laughs> and, 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 and I have to say that, that, that just came back, you know, we, we, we needed that fresh breeze from someone else. And so I, I, it's, it's a really great band now, mm. I have to say. Well, and and I, th- I, I know Anders is happy, you know, with his decision and everything. And we're still good friends, so it's no hard feelings or anything. No. But I just want to say, with Revolution, you and Oscar did a lot of the executive producing for that album. I'd just like to ask, <laughs> how was it great doing that? Because from what I've read, I know tabloids can twist and turn to misinterpret a few things, but... One of the decisions for Andres to leave the band was the direction of the music the band was going into. Do you feel Revolution was a change in a direction for you guys? Or was it just to not recreate the will, but to see where you guys are now and go further on? And I, 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 th- I think that, that that's not right, you know, because the thing is... Uh, I think more, more or less, you know, we, we're doing the same thing. Of course, we want to, you know, to find the roots again, you know, where we came from, you know, get back the energy and everything in the songs. And that's why we had a break before uh, the last album uh, for almost two years, just, you know, to get the energy back and everything. And and when we recorded the album, I think when it comes to Anders, he al- already decided to leave. You know, he, he already had decided to leave. And I don't think, you know, the music direction was any any part of why he quit the band. Mm. But, well, oh, yes, yeah. go on. I, I, I did say it last year at Barkham, when you played at Barkham, you did Glory to the Brave in a full entirety. It was an anniversary. And it, yeah. it, it looked like you guys were really doing well. You had a couple of other members to join on the stage as well. And then yeah. about a month or two, Andres is gone. But that's a, we want to praise Andres for his career. I mean, he... Of course. He's done an amazing job for Hammerfall. And not only that, he's been in the business for over 40 years as well. So hat, Exactly. Uh, hats and, and I... Yeah, exactly. Hats off for him. And I, I have to say, what he's been doing... For for that forty years, it's amazing. That's a dream for a lot of people, and I can understand. You know, he became a father again, mm. and recently he became a dad again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So he has two like teenagers, and now two infants, more or less. So I can understand. You know, putting putting the time into that instead of being away all the time. That was the reality back in the day mm. when he got the other kids, you know, the teenagers, he was gone all the time. And maybe he decided, I didn't, you know, he want, he want, he wants to be home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A question straight. That's understandable. Yeah, it is. It is. But a question I want to ask you, Ponce, is how difficult or how easy for you to adapt your playing style from album to album? I mean, if we go back to a song like Hearts on Fire or, Last Man Standing, before you even joined the band, but now playing yeah. playing those songs live in front of a massive audience and also playing the new album, Revolution, like one of my favourite tracks is Live Life Loud. My partner, who oh. is very inspired, we won't back down, she loves that song. But how, uh. how easy or how difficult for you to adapt your playing style when you're playing the old material compared to the new material? I I I have I have to say the whole the whole way of um, the the writing of you know how to arrange the songs and stuff are quite similar because it's been since day one it's been Joachim and Oscar more or less writing the songs mm. since I joined the band I I've been integrated more and more to write songs but I you know. I'm a very old friend uh, with Stefan Elmgren, the f- former guitar player, and and the thing is, uh, playing his stuff f- f- for me, it's like uh, 
I, I, it, it's 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 no difference. I have to say, you know, may, maybe back in the day the songs were a little bit more complicated because mm. when you are younger, you you're not thinking the same way as you do when you get older because you get more mature in you know, in the songwriting, arranging, and stuff like that. Mm. And but 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 I have I have to say, like playing, I, I just you know you don't say adapt but it's like it's it's so easy when now when me and oscar when 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 we play together we just understand each other so easy so it's uh, it's i don't feel you know any any difference playing the old songs except uh, not except sorry but, but comparing to the new stuff it's it's i just love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I've, I've got to say, when I see you guys on live where at Barkin or some other festivals or even your own tours around Europe, you and Oscar, yeah. very, you and Oscar really do talk with one another via the guitar. And I, I just love the guitar battle. But the way I see you and Oscar is a bit like Def Leppard. Even though some of their earlier stuff with the guitar playing is very, very complicated, but... When you look at it, when you look at like Phil Collins and Steve McClark when they were doing Pyromania or Hysteria, they had yeah. such a unique sound. And you and Oscar, and along with Stefan as well, the previous guitar player, it all blended yeah. in. It might have been a, a recipe of a thousand ingredients, but you guys just made it so fresh and so unique. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's I. I have to say that that's the, the just to find find the um, uh, uh, when it comes to the twin guitar thing. It's like if 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 me me and Oscar has been of course struggling quite a lot. You know, from, from when I started uh, like nine years ago, almost now, and you know, just to find the. the I I always say that like the. The, the human clock because you always you know everyone has different uh, timing sort of and and the thing is when w- w- one day it was du- during the first tour i remember it was just clicking suddenly it was just wow no, now it's now that sound comes out of the twin guitar thing with the rhythms with everything but uh, that's why i like that's why i like to play the, this you know heavy metal because w- when that clicks 100 percent, it's amazing mm. well for you so. per- for you personally um with the way that the music business is now compared it was like 20 years ago or 30 years ago in the in the glamorous 80s how important is it to stay relevant in the music business today i mean if bands start out today it's going to be a lot harder for them due to internet and social media part and download but how important today, especially yourself, even even for an advice for the younger bands, to stay relevant in the music business today? Um, I'm, if I understand you right, it's like it, it, the, the whole, you know, everything, you know, how many albums just in Sweden gets released every year? It's like four, five thousand. <laughs> different well, artists releasing you know and then you come in, in just in, in the metal genre it's you know it's so many bands and 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 now the new generation is coming up with the bands but i have to say learning from from the new generation because they think totally different because yeah. they they have you know they have like uh, 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 how do you say they, they they get everything from YouTube. They, they they see everything. Back in the day, I had I had to sit with my finger on the fucking LP and slow it down so I could hear what Ingmar was playing or what you know whoever guitar player. But now they they have got everything and they develop that into something new. And that that's what I like with you know taking part of the of of the upcoming bands and you know new releases just listen how, how, how are they thinking but you know just getting that into how we think that's 
th that collaboration is quite interesting also just you know to to mix their thinking and get it into because we can't just change because then the fans going to be like what the fuck <laughs> 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 that, 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 that's how it is if if you change too drastically it's it, then you scare scare the fans sort of but just just taking small pieces and stuff how people do it nowadays and the young artists do it nowadays it's amazing that that it's an opportunity that that i didn't have in mm. the same way yeah so yeah well, i, I want to ask you about the the single of the latest album revolution of hector's hymn when you did a video clip for that you used a lot of blue screens or green screen to put in the 3d image that the band had you also done that Previously, with um, Last Man Standing as well, there's a lot of 3D animation and all that. How was that for yeah. you guys, just playing in a empty room? But when you look at it on on a video clip, you've got all these things happening around you. Yeah, it, it, it's quite funny because when, when we did when we did, when we did Hector's hymn, we were we were doing it in in like his storage place in in the outskirts of gothenburg and we went there and these two guys uh they're from south america and uh, they, they they we saw some drawings and stuff before how it's going to be and, and they explained for us and then we were lying on stools we were lying on tables we were you know it, it was like and and we didn't know anything and they said it's going to be about this it's going to look a bit like this and it, this is going to happen behind you so think this so you have to act in a in a way it, it, out of you know act out of nowhere because you don't have a, anything to relate to you just have to okay if I, if i do this will it look good but but it's you know th that's the fun thing when you see the results you get blown away mm, yeah <laughs> and and that was the same with the enemies necessary the song from <clears throat> from um, um, No Sacrifice, No Victory, when we released Enemies, Enemies Necessary. Mm. We were standing in a room on a green screen just playing, and he said, it's going to be this, and it's going to explode there, and this is going to happen, and you, if, if you go too far here, you're going to fall down, because there's a cliff, and it's a steep that's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of meters, and it's like, okay, and you're walking around on a concrete floor with a little bit of dust on sort of it's like okay <laughs> and then you see the result and you get blown away <laughs> yeah yeah and anything necessary it's another outstanding video clip as well for the fact yeah. you have for the fact you want to say go on youtube there's a lot of great video clips from hammerfall for over the years but Pontius, i want to ask uh, for the tour what spe mm -hmm. what special things or what surprises are we going to have are we going to have pyrotechnics or have you guys going to scale back or What's gonna happen? Oh, I think I think we have to leave something for the show day. But uh, what we're bringing, what we're planning, uh, we hope we can make everything happen that we want make happen. But uh, uh, I don't know exactly because that's the production side, mm -hmm. and it's in Germany now. And we came up up with ideas and stuff because it's flying shows. We can't bring that much stuff that we want to bring, mm -hmm. but uh, it's going to be. However, it's going to be a spectacular show. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't know if it's going to be pyro. I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah, and going back to the filming, I don't know if you've been told this. Um, but like I said earlier in the interview, it's going to be filmed mm -hmm. exclusively. Any release for that, what's going to happen? going to be a Blu-ray, DVD or CD compilation? I don't know that. Uh, I, I just heard that everything's going to be filmed, and uh, but I don't exactly know the purpose. I yeah. hope we're doing something because, of course, first time in 18 years going to Australia, of course we're going to put it in print sort of just... Yeah. So, yeah, why, we have to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, fans, if you haven't got your tickets, you uh, got a couple of weeks left to get those tickets from metalobsession.net, please get there. Yeah. I've been rallying these guys for the last 18 months to get to Australia. And it, like I said, unknown to me, there was a petition going around on Facebook to bring these guys down. It now happened. All thanks to a listener.
from the yeah. interview I did with Oscar. And I'll be down the yeah. front. I'll be down the front, and I'll be rattling with my iron fist in the air and yeah. singing my lungs out to all the classics and the new songs that I like as well. Oh, fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing you there in yeah. about two weeks only. That's yes. great. Yes, and I'll be, yeah. I'll be there. And if you want to, if you want to catch up with the other artists, there's Elm Street and Tabarel. They're going to be playing yeah. on the bill. Two great Australian bands. I've seen Elm Street a few times. I haven't seen Tabarel yet, but I am going to see them when they open up for the Mighty Hammerfall. Well, Ponce, it's yeah. all the time we got for twenty minutes. Is what the record label had gave us, and we cannot yes. wait. We cannot wait, and I personally cannot wait to see you in Melbourne at the One Seventy Russell Street in Melbourne. Yes, and uh, I hope we can have a pint afterwards. We surely will. We surely will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we're going to play you some classic Hammerfall tunes for this mighty tour. I'm going to play some of my favourite and some of my all-time cover. That's a cover album that Hammerfall released a few years ago. I'm going to play you some yeah. covers they've done as well. Well, Pontus, it's all the time we got for. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.